All right. So we are nearing the end of this whole course. And before I conclude, I wanted to give you some tips and tricks and then walk you through a few more concepts before we conclude this course. Okay, so I wanted to show you a few more tools that we didn't quite see them in detail in the previous lectures. So the first thing I want to talk about is graphs, right? Um, and especially the map component in visualization. So what I have done here is I've just opened the report that I created in the very first lecture, the non-wizard report. And let me show you how to go ahead and create a map. So first thing is I'm going to add a report and let this be a blank report and I'm going to call this as a map. All right. The next thing as we generally do is we will add a data source. And again, I'm going to just call this as a map data source. And we're going to use the same um, data database that we've been using in all the lectures. That is AdventureWorks database. All right, so in the next, I'm going to create a data set. And let's see if there is any data set that's available. So I'll go to the query designer and let's add some tables. So one of the things is there will be certain tables which will be using the spatial data types. And spatial data types is nothing but a data type that is used to kind of store the geography related information, right? So if you'd like to know more about these things like the spatial data types and stuff, um, I believe I have recorded a few lectures in my previous courses, so you can have a look at them as well. All right, so I will go ahead and maybe add address. Let's see what's available in address. So I'm going to choose all the columns and click execute. All right, so we have quite a few rows here, right? And so we have address line one, two, and this is basically the spatial uh, or the geography data type that I was talking about. And it kind of stores this information. All right, so we have some data to work with and I'll go ahead and use this. And now if we go to your toolbox, you will find a map tool also. So I'm gonna drag and drop this. And as soon as I drag and drop that, there is basically a wizard that opens up. So there are three options available here. One is the map gallery and by default, it basically loads, um, you know, the USA maps, right? So there are various flavors of this or the states by county maps. So something to work with over here. And the next optional thing, what you could do is, um, you know, if you would like to onboard your own shape, you can use an SRE file. Now, I would strongly recommend you to read about SRE files. It's basically, um, you know, uh, the files that basically create a custom map for you, right? And then there are plenty of resources available online. And the third is basically you can actually use a query, right? And and let's do that because we, we have configured a query. As soon as I click next, it's going to ask me the data set and Basically, it, it recognized that there is a field called spatial location and it points to these points in the overall global map, right? And what you could also do is um, click on add a Bing Maps layer and it'll download the Bing Maps, right? So you can actually visually see. So there's a ton of points here. And, um, you know, you could, you could actually customize this further, but I'm going to leave it a little bit simple. Okay, the next is basically it's asking about visualization, whether you need a bubble map or, you know, basic marker map, we can just leave it as it is, right? And then click next. And this is how it's going to look, right? So the markers can be circles, it can be rectangles, it can be push pins, right? So all these push pins basically, um, you know, kind of um, show you the spatial location data that we had just seen. All right. So again, um, now we have a lot of points over here, right? So imagine that you have a map and you can kind of embed layers over it. You can kind of, one, one example would be to show population and then color code it. So max population with red and the minimum population with green. 
So there's tons of things you can do. So I just wanted to show you an overall um, idea of this. And if I display labels, it's just going to look very crowded, right? Because there is like 10,000 plus points over there. All right, so uh, next I click finish and it kind of generates this map for me. So good looking map. And then of course I can remove unwanted stuff if I don't need them. And if I kind of click preview, it's going to display that map for me. So pretty interesting stuff. Right, so just, just take care that the first time when you actually run this, this might take some time. So don't be puzzled. Of course, you can kind of, um, you know, modify these things, write expression, um, something like this. So yeah, a lot of things you can do. You can keep adding more layers over here. Uh, you can keep adding more data points or you can just show the US map and a lot of things can be done. So I just wanted to get you a basic idea of this one. The next thing uh, which we didn't go in too much detail is basically deployment, right? So if you look at your solution explorer and then right click on the overall solution, you see that there is a target server URL. Um, and, and you might just find that your URL says something like this, local host report server. Since I have an instance, um, you know, I'm just, uh, we need to append the word uh, underscore instance name. So that's precisely what I have done. So what this is saying is when I deploy a report so that, um, you know, I can pass on the report links to other people within the organization or outside the organization, this is the server that they need to access, right? So now this is local host means it's going to just deploy on my laptop. But then again, if you have a reporting services installed on some other machine, all you have to do is just replace this by the machine name and hit deploy. And then, you know, it goes into that machine. All right, so let me quickly show you. If you right click on map and say deploy, it's actually, it says one succeeded. So let me go to the report server and then show you how this looks like. All right, so I have hit localhost slash reports underscore SQL 2016, and this is how the UI looks like. Now, one thing is probably a deployment failed and hence you don't find any report here. So I'm going to redo that once more. Uh, let me go ahead and click on deploy. And let's see, hopefully, yeah, this should have succeeded. Let's go ahead and have a look. If I click refresh, all right, so our report did appear here and I'm going to show you about, you know, just clicking on that report. All right, the report rendered and this is how it looks. Again, I haven't configured it too much and hence you're seeing it this way. So let me go ahead and show you something else. Let me actually um, try to deploy the other report that we just created. So this is the report and then when I click preview, it basically just is a, it's a, it's this is the report that we created in the very first or initial lectures right now i think um let's go ahead and deploy this and hopefully it'll give me an error yeah it failed and that's because it has a shared data source so in such cases you need to first deploy the shared data source and then the report so i'm going to right click on this and then just say deploy and it should hopefully deploy it successful and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and then click deploy all right it's successful so I will go ahead and refresh this portal and now you see there are two folders one for the data source which we just um, deployed so if you right click on that if you actually um, click on that, you will actually see all the configurations that we have provided. Um, and then we can definitely open our report as well and the report will display. So this is how you would basically deploy uh, reports. Now, now this whole user interface, I have been, I'm not going too much in detail. It's just like your Windows Explorer where, you know, you could create folders, you could set up security, um, you know, share your folder and stuff like that. So it's it's kind of pretty intuitive. Um, you know, if you just try 
playing around a little bit it's it's no different from any windows explorer all right so i think we have covered a lot of concepts in this whole course and this course also marks the completion of the bi set of tools um one other thing that i wanted to let you know is that ssas or sql server analysis services is also considered a part of the bi set of tools but i purposely didn't cover that because it's it's kind of a little different and considering the newer tools that are available like tableau and stuff like that which kind of creates a proxy of a cube um you know uh, it it might not be that helpful to spend too much of time um creating a course for that but if you feel that um you strongly are using that you know um put a comment and i'll try to record a course on that as well so if we look at the bi set of tools what we did was that we had a course which just talked about basic introduction basic querying we started with what is database what are tables we looked at some of the basic queries and stuff like that then we moved on to um you know some advanced concepts as well right we talked about stored procedures uh we talked about triggers and and stuff like that so that was that was that was a little bit um as the next 201 kind of a course as compared to the previous one we also talked about what what's out there right um so if you were not querying and if you wanted to learn more about databases what's out there so naturally some of the dba concepts are involved like tuning a database tuning a query indexing and so on and so forth i don't have a course on that but um, again leave me a comment if you want me to record something and i'm happy to do so then we moved on how to transfer data between different systems so i did record a course on sql server integration services right which basically walked you through uh, some basics on how to extract transform and load data between different systems and then finally we stepped into reporting right and this course was mainly focused around ssrs or sql server reporting services so this concludes the overall set of tools that i wanted to cover i'm hoping that you guys all enjoyed the courses um definitely feel free to connect with me through udemy or through my website and uh, feel free to ask questions that you may have regarding um analytics databases reporting etc and i also had a lot of fun recording this course so please keep in touch and all the very best